10 things to know before you go to Zion National Park in Utah. I'm Chris, this is Topher, this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. And in this video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know if you're considering visiting this national park. And the first thing you should know if you're visiting this national park is something that makes it different from a lot of other national parks, maybe like the Grand Canyon, where you see the park from the canyon rim. In Zion National Park, you see the canyon from within the canyon. These cliffs are over 3,000 feet tall. So that's not to say that like the Grand Canyon, you can't view Zion from the top. Actually, most of the hikes will take you to the top, but for the truly lazy who don't want to go thousands of feet of elevation climbing, the Canyon Overlook Trail, this one, it's on Route 9 just outside of the tunnel, and you can get some pretty impressive views of the canyon down below. And it's only about a mile round trip hike from the parking lot. Uh, the other thing you should know where this is located, Zion National Park is in Southwest Utah. Uh, it's 223 square miles. The park is really big. If you love natural parks and you love nature, you are sure to love Zion. Because Zion National Park is in a canyon, some of it gets a lot of sun, like right here where it's open. This is the park's hallmark, it's the Temple of Sinawava. It's where the river has made the canyon pretty wide, but some parts of it are pretty narrow. And actually, this leads up to the narrows, which some parts of this canyon are so narrow, it only gets minutes of sunshine a day. Well, hey, every scene I do in this video will be in a different part of the park, so you'll get to see a little bit of the park as you watch. The second thing to know before you go to Zion is about getting into Zion. Zion National Park, being a big national park, you can imagine it's in the middle of nowhere. The two closest cities it's closest to are Las Vegas and Salt Lake City. It's about two, three hours driving from Las Vegas if you fly into there. It's about four or five hours driving from Salt Lake City if you fly into there. Drive into LAX, Los Angeles, seven hours driving from there. So pretty much that's how you get into the park. You fly to one of those airports and then you drive it and you rent a car. We're talking about getting around, but when you get here, the main entrance is in town called Springdale. There's a few other entrances around the park, but most people come in on Springdale and come in through the main part of the canyon. So that's what this video is primarily gonna focus on. The third thing to know before you get to Zion National Park is about getting around Zion National Park. Most of the year from March, maybe all the way up to through November, they run shuttles to get through the park. This is a shuttle stop back here. There are nine shuttle stops within the park. They stop at the visitor center. That's the entrance to the Canyon Drive. And the last one is right here at the Temple to Sinawava. The stops it makes in between are things to other hiking trails, other lookouts, and the Zion Lodge in the middle. The shuttles run about every 10 to 15 minutes. They start in morning. They go until about sunset. There can be a little wait to get on the shuttle in the morning from the main shuttle stop. So do be prepared to add a little bit of extra time. The length of the shuttle, it takes 40 minutes to go from the visitor center stop number one to stop number nine here at the end. So if you're coming to Zion National Park when the shuttles are in operation, then you basically got two places where you can park. You can either park at the visitor center right at the front of the park or you park in the town of Springdale. There is no free parking at Zion National Park. All throughout Springdale, you'll find pay parking lots. The private parking lots are paid. The street parking is paid. Everything is paid. So grab a parking spot. There's a shuttle that runs within Springdale that'll then take you to the park. And then you can take another shuttle from there to go actually go into the park. If you're staying at a hotel in Springdale, then just park your car at your hotel, take the shuttle from your hotel. First thing you'll want to do, come to Zion National Park start your visit at the visitor center and you'll be wondering where do you get the maps you'll see people with maps we went inside we couldn't find the maps there was a long line you don't have to wait in line the maps they keep them right here between the doors on the outside and you can pick that up where the visitor center is open or closed the map will give you lots of great information about uh, the different shuttles that are operated and so you'll definitely want this with you so once you're here in Zion, what is there to do? There is a lot to do in Zion. I'd say most people come here to hike. There are hiking trails for all different skill levels. 
this trail, it's entirely paved, the Temple of Sinawava. But if you want over there, right next to it, there's a trail that's not paved. Or you can climb up the rock face, you can ride a horse, you can do river activities. There are tons of things to do in Zion. So if the Temple of Sinawava trail is not difficult enough for you because that's just a sidewalk and that's too easy, and you want to see the narrows, what the park is famous for, the really, really narrow spot, well, you got to go, you got to go that way. There's no trail. You gotta go in the water. There's actually a bunch of people I've seen them doing it. They get these dry suits, these dry shoes. There's a place that rents them right in front of the park. And uh, you just basically walk right through the river. Maybe a warmer day for me. What's really cool about Zion National Park is just how varied everything is. You go from trails that have bridges and then it comes into what almost looks like a sea cave. I mean, this isn't moss, but it kind of looks like moss. This could look like something that's by the ocean. By the way, this is the Canyon Overlook Trail. It's on Route 9 just outside the tunnel if you want to check this out. And it has sweeping views of the canyon just this way. Well, until we get to the top, there's even more sweeping views of the canyon. Before you go to Zion, you should know about what to bring with you for your trip and for your experience in the park. But first, what am I standing in front of? This is the Angel's Landing, one of the most popular and famous hikes in the park. Though they do caution, it is steep and there's steep drops and people have died climbing. So be careful if you're doing that. So what should you bring? Well, first of all, you should bring water. You'll be thirsty, particularly in the summer. So bring a couple bottles of water. You can fill up water. Pretty much any of the shuttle stops, they have drinking fountains. You should bring some sunscreen because in the summer, sun is bright. In the winter, it's bright too. There's snow on the ground and we're at kind of a high elevation, uh, 3,500 to like 8,000 feet. The elevation is high, which makes the sun even stronger. Uh, finally, you should probably bring some snacks because there aren't many places to buy food within the park. Actually, there's only one place to eat, but we're going to talk about that in the food section. Okay, let's talk about food. What is there to eat in the park? Well, you've got one, maybe two options depending upon the time of year. If you're here when it's not busy, then there's one option. It's this one. It's the Red Rock Grill. It's on the second floor of the Zion Lodge. It's a full service restaurant. I will warn you though, it can be busy. We stopped in here for lunch on December 27th. We got here about one. We had to wait an hour and a half to be seated. Burgers, fish and chips, salads, that sort of stuff is what they serve. There's a seasonal cafe that opens when it's busy. Other than that, you are on your own. So I would suggest if you're really hungry and you're hiking the trails, pack in a snack. Some snacks, some power bars, some energy bars, this and that. Then you don't have to be victim to an hour and a half wait for lunch. We are really hungry now, by the way, so I hope those burgers are good. I'll let you know. So speaking of the Zion Lodge, let's talk about lodging now. To find a place to sleep at night in Zion National Park, if you want to sleep on a bed, you only have one option the Zion Lodge. It is the only hotel in the actual park. If you want to stay here, you need to book about 13 months in advance. Rooms are about $220 in 2019. So you can book the first of the month for 13 months from now. So plan ahead if you want to do that. Your other options in the park, there are three campgrounds. The one that's open all year round is the Watchman Campground right by the Visitor Center. If these are all booked up and you don't want to camp, well, your other options is hotel in Springdale, the town just right outside the entrance. There's a ton of hotels there. If those are all booked out, you can go 45 minutes out driving to St. George. You'll probably find a lot more hotels out there. Uh, but if you are considering staying in Springdale, you might want to consider the Spring Hill Suites. We have a video review on it. That's where we stayed for our trip. We pretty much enjoyed it. It was close by free breakfast, and there's a shuttle stop right there that brings you into the park. Link in the description below or at the end of this video to watch that. But even if you're booking those hotels in Springdale, you should book them early. Why? Because Zion National Park is the third most visited park in the United States with four and three quarter million tourists that came to visit the park just last year. So even if you're staying in town, it might be worthwhile to book those hotels six months out. They'll book up, I guarantee it. So if you're planning a trip to Zion, you'll probably want to know when's the best time to come to Zion National Park. Well, most visitors come in spring and fall. That's probably the best weather time to come. Summer, a lot of people come in summer too, but it can be oppressively hot in summer. 
you might want to visit in winter when we're visiting because the shuttle buses don't run, which might be a good thing because then you can like drive into the park and it's a whole different experience. Though they've actually just started running the shuttles in December, so they were running them when we were here. And uh, a nice thing about coming in the winter, it's not hot. And because it's not hot, you can hike and walk a lot, lot more. Though you do have to bundle yourself up. And if you're walking that narrow trail in the water, well, that might not be a winter activity. That's definitely a summer activity if you're trying to get in the water. Before you go to Zion National Park, you should know about safety. One of the things they warn visitors the most about in the park is about flash floods. Because there's this river that runs through the whole park and a lot of the trails actually run through it, it's really important that you pay attention to the flash flood warning levels. In California, if you hike there, you'll be used to seeing signs about fire potential danger, but here they give you signs about flash flood potential. So where's all the water in this river come from? Well, a lot of it comes from the rocks. How does the water come out of the rocks or the cliff? You can actually look this rock right here, this water coming out of it, and you can actually see the stream right here of the water seeping out from that rock. The term the National Park Service uses is weeping. They call the rocks weeping. But there was a little kid over here and he was saying, Mommy, look, that rock is peeing. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So speaking of those weeping rocks, when it's cold in December, it actually turns into ice. You can see the icicles up there and uh, it actually ices as it falls into that pool right there. So on the note of safety, because it is cold and it's wet, things get pretty slippery. I've seen some people doing some pretty gnarly slides down this hill. So make sure you're using a railing, have a firm grip. Ooh, that's cold. Maybe put on some gloves when you hold that railing. You should know that although Zion National Park is open 365 days a year, when it isn't is when there's a federal government shutdown. When the federal government doesn't pass a budget, Zion National Park doesn't have any staff. The park doesn't close, but a lot of the people aren't here, like people to clean the bathrooms, people to take your tickets, and so just plan ahead. If the government is shut down, make sure what you want to do is actually open and available. When we were here in December of 2018, the state of Utah provided some funds to keep like the visitor centers open and the visitor center bathrooms maintained, but not this bathroom. And by the way, it's not just the government shutdown that closes things. Actually, the weather and construction can, can close things too. When we were here, maybe a third of the major trails were closed either due to rock slides, weather, or construction. So again, don't just check for the government shutdown. Check that the conditions are actually good for the trailer activity that you want to do. And the last thing to know is that we've got more videos, more videos from around the world. And if you're considering staying in a hotel here by Zion, check out our review of the Spring Hill Suites in Zion. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. We won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next one or maybe this one. <laughs>